All right, so first things first, um, this was incorrect. The volume of a cone is 1 third pi r squared h. Um, remember how we talked about if you have any, oof, any shape, it's just like one face uh, is identical to the other face, and it's just a straight line between those. Uh, then you just take the surface area of one face and multiply it by the height, right? And of course, this is pi r squared is uh, the height of this of this um, cylinder, right? Um, pi r squared times h is the volume of the cylinder, and any pyramid, okay, and that in a circular pyramid we would call a cone. That's one third of the entire. Uh, we'll call it a circular prism. A cylinder. So I was just missing a pi there. So when we do that problem, we'll make sure to make that correct substitution. Should have had a pi in that formula. Okay, this one. Uh, this fooled most of you. Though it's not really meant to fool you. It's not meant to be a trick question or anything. But look at this. Doesn't don't these look eerily familiar? Like if I had the sine of x. And I told you to use the limiting process to find the derivative. Well, it'd be pretty hard because what's going to happen? You're going to take the limit as h goes to infinity, of course. Uh, you know, it's going to be over h, of course. It's always that. Uh, f of x plus h. What's f of x? f of x is the sine of x. What? So what is uh, f of x plus h if x equals pi over 3? Well, it's the sine of pi over 3 plus h, right, minus f of x, f of x at pi over 3 would be sine of pi over 3. So what is this? It's the derivative of sine. It's the derivative of the sine function at pi over 3. What's the derivative of the sine function? It's the cosine function, right? This is really just, uh, if, if f of x is the sine function, question is, what's f prime of pi over 3? That's what this thing is trying to find. Equals what? Well, it equals the cosine at pi over 3. And that is 1 half. That's it. No need to try and cancel out h's or do anything crazy like that. This is something, like, you need to recognize that this is the derivative. For, if for no other reason, they're going to ask questions like this on the AP test. I will bet you they do. Okay, and it just relies on you to um, recognize that this is a an expression of the derivative. Okay, I could say all of this, or I could say here's f of x. What's f prime of pi over three? Right, it's all the the same thing. So, just a matter of did you recognize that that's the same thing as asking what's the derivative? Okay, so we're gonna find f prime, of course, and we're gonna plug two in there if we want to find the slope of the graph at a certain point at this at this x value, then uh, we're going to have to take the derivative. So f prime, we got an outside function of a square, so we're just going to treat that like something squared and not touch the something, okay, well, it's to the first power, right? Don't have to write that, but it is to the first power. Okay, times the derivative of the inside, the inside is negative 3. So we get negative 6 times negative 3x minus 7. And that would be 18x plus, uh, no, 42, 18x plus 42, okay. Um, so either way you want to go with that, uh, that works just fine. Oh, okay, I got a little confused because I was like, I don't remember this being the answer because we're supposed to plug 2 into it. We plug 2 into the function, so uh, this is f prime of x. So f prime of 2 is going to be 18 times 2 plus 42. Grab the calculator. Yeah, 18 times 2 plus 42. 78. That's it. Uh, determine the points at which the graph of the function has a horizontal tangent. OK, so if, if there's a function and it has a horizontal tangent, what does that mean? It means the derivative is 0. So we take the derivative y prime 3x squared plus 18x to the first plus 0. We set it to 0. Okay, so we set that equal to 0. Well, that's going to be, th I'm going to factor out a 3x. 
that's going to be x plus 6 equals 0. So 3x equals 0, x plus 6 equals 0. So x equals 0 or negative 6. Those are the places where we have a horizontal tangent line. Is that a maximum, a minimum? We don't, we don't know. We just know it's a horizontal tangent line because it could mean that it's like that. It could mean that it's like that it's supposed to look more like that, where it just kind of levels out and keeps going up like that. Who knows? Okay, we can make a pretty good guess because we know about uh, cubic functions, but we just pretend like we don't have any idea. All we know is that there's a horizontal tangent line at those x values. Okay, so we take the derivative. What am I doing here? I'm testing you to see if you recognize that you need the uh, the quotient rule. So, p prime of t, that's low, d high, minus high, d low, over, whoops, that's a little bit too much over, over the square of what's below, t to the fifth plus six squared. That's fine. Uh, we can do 4t to the fifth plus 24 minus 20t to the fifth. Uh, 4t to the fifth minus 20t to the, 20t to the fifth is negative 16t to the fifth. We got a 24 there. 24 minus 16t to the fifth over t to the fifth plus 6 squared. All right, so that'll work. This one, let me get my notes real quick. Okay, the first thing. One of those things where I wish I knew how to get this through, and I tried from the, from the Algebra 2 days to instill in you that this and this are not multiplied together, okay? Trig functions, though they are some letters and they do involve some parentheses, they're not a product. This is not the secant times 7 pi t minus 4, right? Like if I said the sine of pi over 3. That is not saying the sine times pi over 3. What does it mean when you say sine? It means nothing. This means absolutely nothing by itself. You have to evaluate the sine function at some point, at some value. This is just a word. It has no meaning. To multiply it by something would be ridiculous. Okay, so it is not a product. We do not need to do the product rule uh, because we see a secant and a parenthesis. Okay. The next thing is to recognize that this is the same thing as this. There we go. Uh, squared, right? The whole thing squared. This is really, when you see this guy here, it means the secant is inside the square function. Okay, so we're going to have to use the, uh, the chain rule on that. Okay, so if we were to use the chain rule, we would bring down the 2 times 5 is 10. Um, okay, so that's 10, and uh, we've just worked with the outside function, which is square, right? So the inside function stays the same. And that was the next thing. Some of you are missing, I think, this secant of 7 pi t minus 4. There's a few 7, there's, well, there's a couple of secant 7 pi t's minus 4. Uh, so... I'm not sure which one gets missed, wh which part you're not getting, but I think it's this part, right? Um, that we, we bring the power down, multiply by 5, right? And, and now this is to the first. Then we multiply by the derivative of the secant. And the derivative of the secant is secant. And here's another thing, secant of something, right? Some of you had secant, tangent. The se what is that? The secant of the tangent? It could be. You could take the secant of the tangent. That's not what's going on in this problem, right? It's the secant of this thing, 7 pi t minus 4, times the tangent of 7 pi t minus 4 times, now, so we, we've had the, the outside, the, the outsidest function, most outside function, is something squared. So we bring that down, that's the inside function. Okay, so now you have to multiply by the derivative of this inside function. That's the secant times the tangent. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, of that inside function. Okay? So the derivative of 7 pi t minus 4 is 7 pi. Okay? And a lot of you got that, so that was fine. So we've got 70 pi 
Um, right, 70 pi times, well, the secant to the first, so that this is the secant, so 7 pi t minus 4, no power necessary, times another secant, so that's secant squared of 7 pi t minus 4 times the tangent of 7 pi t minus 4. And we're done. The second derivative, a tricky one. Okay. Um, well, sort of. Um, I'm going to take the derivative first. That's f prime of x. Okay. I don't know why. Oh, I see what's going on here. Chill out. All right, so the derivative of the sine is the cosine. It's cosine of 5x to the fourth, right? But then we have to take the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's going to be times 20x to the third. All right, that was easy. Now we're going to take the second derivative. The second derivative is the derivative of this. Now this is a product of functions. This would be u, and this would be v. Okay, we're going to need the chain rule on this one when we uh, do the derivative of u, so we'll keep that in mind. Um, so here we go, u prime. What is the derivative of the cosine? It's the negative sine of exactly what you see here, right? We're about to do the chain rule. Multiply by 20x to the third, okay? Times 20x to the third, plus, now we're gonna take the derivative of this guy times the cosine, so that's gonna be uh, 60x to the second power times the cosine of 5x to the fourth. Just barely fit that in there. Um, so we can clean this up a bit. f double prime of x equals, uh, since this is negative, I'm going to make it second. So I'm going to write this first. I'm going to write uh, 60x squared cosine of 5x to the fourth. Okay then in parentheses, just so that's clear, minus, right, just so the minus comes to the second, minus, okay, so I'm going to multiply this together, you get 400x to the sixth times the sine of 5x to the fourth, all right, and if I wanted to, I could factor out, um, what, a, a 20... I think that's about it, yeah, a 20. A 20x squared, you can factor that out. Um, that's gonna leave me with three cosine of five x to the fourth minus uh, 20x to the fourth sine of five x to the fourth. Or leave it like this. Or it doesn't really leave it like this. It doesn't really matter. But this is uh, probably what you would see on an AP test answer. They factor out those things. And the derivative of the function. So we're going to have to take the product rule. Here is u, and here is v. So f prime equals six x to the fifth. That's the derivative of u. Times v. That's three plus five x to the seventh plus, okay, so just x to the sixth times v prime, that's seven times three plus five x to the sixth times the derivative of the inside, that's times five, okay. Um, so we have five times seven, um, actually, you know what, we have a, so you have this three plus five x uh, in common, have to, actually I have three plus five x to the sixth, right? common between all of this. So we could take out a, uh, we could actually take an x to the fifth times 3 plus 5x to the sixth out of everything, right? This has an x to the fifth, this has an x to the fifth at the least. This has a, a 3 plus x, 3 plus 5x to the sixth. This has a 3 plus 5x to the uh, sixth, all right? And we have one left over. So, um, Right, so if we factor out an x to the fifth out of here, we'll have a six, right? We factor out six of these, we'll have one left over. Three plus five x plus, we factored out x to the fifth, so we have an x left times uh, seven. These all got factored out, times seven times five. So I'll just undo that and go 35x. 
Um, I guess we should go ahead and rewrite this. 3 plus 5 x to the 6th times and distribute this. And uh, here, I'll distribute it up here. We have 18 plus 30x plus 35x. So that's 60x plus 18. So we can go that way. Find the derivative of the function. Uh, OK. Um, this is just a constant multiple. So negative 8 times the derivative of this thing. The derivative of this thing is negative sine of 6x times the derivative of the, uh, of the inside function, so that's times 6. And so you get negative times negative, that's positive. 8 times 6, 6 times 8, 48, sine 6x. All right, taking the second derivative of this function means first taking the first derivative. OK, I'm going to get out a skinny pencil for this one, because this is going to take up some room. So take the derivative of 6, that's 0, great. Take the derivative of negative 10xy, that's going to be, uh, I'm just going to treat negative 10x like its own little function, u, and this guy like v. Just y is the v function. Uh, ah, here's my skinny pencil. Okay, so the derivative of negative 10x is negative 10. Right, we're using the product rule here. So negative 10 times y plus, all right, what? Now negative 10x times the derivative of y, that's dy dx, equals, OK, so we use the product rule on that. Double check my work if you want. Um, derivative of 7x is 7, right? Because we're taking the derivative with respect to x. All right, so if we're taking the derivative of a function of x that has x in it, we just treat it like we normally would. No chain rule necessary. But if we have a y, we do need to use the chain rule. Uh, or when we get to y, we take the derivative of y, it's dy dx. Uh, minus 3 dy dx. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to get dy dx by itself. Okay. Some, uh, at least one person I remember, just kept taking the derivative here and then, um, you know, take um, the derivative of the derivative is the second derivative, and so when you get to that, you you know you've got d, this, the second derivative. So to, once you get to the the part where you take the derivative of dy dx, it's just the second derivative. The problem is you can't just leave dy dx in the definition of the second derivative. You got to plug it in. So we've got to at least solve for dy dx here. So uh, I'll do that quickly uh, by pausing this without making you watch me do it. Okay, so there it is. Uh, you know, the, collect the dy dx is on one side, factor out the dy dx, everything on the else, uh, else on the other side, divide by the coefficient of dy dx, you know, the thing that's left when you factor out the dy dx. There you are. Okay, so we take the second derivative, that's the derivative of this. Okay, we're going to need the uh, quotient rule, of course. So, second derivative, low. D high. What's the derivative of this? Uh, 0 plus 10 dy dx. Remember, we're still taking the derivative with respect to x, so the derivative of y is dy dx. Uh, so low d high minus high d low over the square. What's below? 3 minus 10x squared. Let's clean this up a bit and take this and plug it in for dy dx. So 3 minus 10x times 7 plus 10y over 3 minus 10x minus, um, let's see, I think I messed something up here. Uh, Yes, I did. Why did I do that? So this is, right, hopefully you noticed that. So that was high d low. That's what that was supposed to be. OK, so we distribute that negative 10. We're going to wind up with positive 7, right, when we incorporate this negative as well. Positive 70 uh, plus 100y over. Um, 3 minus
minus 10x squared. Um, you might notice this 3 minus 10x and 3 minus 10x cancel each other out. That's nice. So we get 7 plus 10y plus 70 plus 100y. Okay, so we can, um, let's see, uh, there was supposed to be a 10 there, 10 times dy dx, so this should be also 70 plus 100y over 3 minus 10x squared, so we get 140 plus 100y over 3 minus 10x squared. And that's a great answer. Uh, this is a great answer. This is a great answer. Okay, what's an even greater answer? Okay. And the reason why I'm going to go through this is because uh, I think what I was saying was you may see this on the AP test, like the this this answer we're about to to uh, hammer out. And you need to be able to take your answer, look at their answer, and say, why does mine not look like theirs? Could I get mine to look like theirs? Keep in mind, in the same way that we took the first derivative, we plugged it in for where we see the first derivative, sometimes we can use the original function to kind of clean this up a little bit, OK? So to show you that, I'm just going to take this function, and I'm going to solve it for y, OK? So we'll go like. this. We'll go 3y minus 10xy equals uh, 7x minus 6. Okay. Um, let's make sure that's all correct. So it's right, yeah. And we're going to solve it for y. So we've got y times 3 minus 10x equals 7x minus 6. And y equals 7x minus 6 over 3 minus 10x. All right, so this is the same as y, so we plug that in there. And you have 140 plus 100 times 7x minus 6 over 3 minus 10x over 3 minus 10x squared. Okay, so um, we distribute this uh, 100 here, and we get 140 plus uh, 7, let's see, 700x um, minus 600 over 3 minus 10x over 3 minus 10x squared. OK, how to approach this the best way? I'm going to go ahead and say, um, I would say the best way would be to multiply the numerator denominator by 3 minus 10x. Why is that? Why would I do this? Because if I distribute it to here, this is the main motivation. If I distribute it over here, I'll cancel out this denominator. right? And here I just get 3 minus 10x to the third. Right? So all the work really is just multiplying 140, um, you know, distributing that to this thing. So uh, 140 times 3, that's 420 um, minus 1400x. Um, let's see. This should be 200. 100y plus 100y is 200y. OK. How long have you been screaming at me to fix that? I don't know. So this would be 1400x, not 700x. So 140 times 3 is 420. 140 times negative 10x is negative 1400x plus 1400x, right? Because we, we are also multiplying this by 3 minus 10x. That just canceled out the denominator. So we didn't get minus 600 over, of course, that's not minus 600. That's minus 1,200. Uh, 1,200 over 3 minus 10x to the third power. 
And so the 1400X uh, and the 1400X cancel each other out. And we get 420 minus 1200. Negative 780. Negative 780 over 3 minus 10x to the third. Okay, again, that's just so that if that were an answer on the AP test, you could go from your answer to their answer. But if your answer looked like this, or if it looked like this or this, all of those are great. Okay. So whatever the answer here, one of these uh, would be great. All right, on to finding the derivative of this function in number 10. Okay, so we're, t we're finding dy dx. You can see how there's a y inside a function. We're going to use implicit differentiation. So the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x, plus the derivative of 5 cosine would be negative 5 sine of 5y. Okay, times the derivative of the inside function, that'd be 5 dy dx. And that's equal to 0, because the derivative of 6 is 0. Um, we're going to solve for dy dx. Okay. And let's see, that's going to be, um, we'll take the cosine to the other side. So we've got negative 25 sine of 5y times dy dx equals negative cosine of x. We're going to divide both sides. Negative divided by negative is going to be positive, so dy dx will be positive cosine x over positive 25 sine of 5y. Right, because negative, time, negative divided by negative is positive. Next, um, point is moving along a graph of this function such that the horizontal uh, rate of change is constant at 3 centimeters per second. Okay, so let's just take a, a look at what that means exactly, or approximately. Sine of 9x, sine of 9x, oh, uh, should probably, let's see, go to let's say negative over 2 and go pi over 2 and then let the y go from uh, negative 2 to 2 so we can see this thing. So you can see a few periods of it. All right, so if I turn the trace on I get this point that moves along the graph. Right? So let me move it all the way over here. If I hold this button down, it will move this point horizontally at a steady speed. Okay. Now, notice what it's doing vertically. Fast, not very fast. Going vertically very quickly, now slowing down. Going vertically very quickly. You see how the, the vertical velocity is changing while it's moving horizontally at a steady rate. Right? It's moving at like a, a tenth every, I don't know, half a second, however long it takes to redraw that point. It is moving just a little bit each time, okay, but the same little bit each time. And the vertical velocity is changing depending on where the point is, okay. So they're going to ask a question about dy dt, and it's changing, it's different depending on where the, uh, where the point is, okay. But it's a simple enough problem to solve. What it, we, want, we want dy dt, we're told about dx dt, so we should take the derivative of this with respect to t. All right, that's the only way I can find anything out about dy dt is to take the derivative of y with respect to t. On this side, we can take the derivative with respect to t as well, so when we get to the inside function, we're going to have to take the derivative, right, the chain rule, with respect to t. Okay. So cosine of 9x times the derivative of the, uh, of the inside, the derivative of 9x with respect to t. Normally, it would just be 9, right? The derivative of 9x is 9. But it's not the derivative with respect to x, it's the derivative with respect to t, so it would be dx dt, okay? And uh, it's moving at 3 centimeters per second, right? That's what that is. And then x is pi over 7. So dy dt equals the, let's see, 
Oh, what's that? That's uh, 3 times 9, so 27 times the cosine of 9 times pi over 7. So that's 9 pi over 7. And that's a fine answer. Or you can get the decimal of whatever that is. Make sure your, your calculator is in radian mode. All right. Uh, the part we love the most and the part with the correction from the front page where I have uh, you know, the correct formula. Imagine that. Switch colors. Um, so the radius r of a circle is increasing at a rate of 5 centimeters per second. Right? We can visualize what's going on there. The radius is changing. It's moving. Right? The outside of the circle is moving along at 5 centimeters per second. Um, find the rate of change of the area when the radius is 6. Okay, so it's telling me about radius, it's telling me about area. I should probably find a relationship between area and radius. Area equals pi radius squared. All right. Now, let's see, the rate of change of area, rate of change with respect to time, of course. So dA dt, take the derivative of this side with respect to t, take the derivative of this side with respect to t, 2 pi r, right, dr dt. The outside function is a square, so we bring it down 2 times r to the first. r was the inside function, so we multiply by the derivative of uh, r with respect to t. All right, so d a d t is 2 pi times r, which they tell us is 6, times the, the rate of change of r, which they tell us is 5. So that would be 60 pi centimeters squared per minute per minute. I said second a second ago. It's a minute per minute. Okay. Well, oh, goodness, that's a slow circle. Um, conical tank. All right, let's read it. Conical tank, vertex down, like this thing. Uh, eight feet across, so it looks like from here to there is eight feet. Um, 19 feet deep. From there to there is 19 feet. If water is flowing into the tank at 8 cubic somethings per something feet per minute, okay, so water is going into the tank. Right, water is coming out of here into the tank at a rate of 8 cubic feet minute. Find the rate of change of the depth of water when the water is six feet deep. Oh, okay, so it's not full, right? It's somewhere down, what, that would be, uh, yeah, even less than half. It's somewhere down in here. It's very, very not very full. So um, it's asking us about the rate of change of the, um, the depth of water. It's telling us about um, cubic feet, right? The water is flowing in uh, at a rate of 8 cubic feet per minute. Well, that's a volume of water. Okay, so we got volume. We got uh, a distance across a, a radius or a diameter of a conical tank. We have um, a height, a depth. Okay, so we need to find a relationship between all these things. All right, and volume is equal to 1 third pi, remember that was my mistake, r squared h. Okay. So volume equals, or let's see, I don't know why I did that. I was just going to write it again. So volume equals one third pi r squared h. Well, we want to know about what? We want to know about dh dt. So let's take the derivative. This is the only thing that's going to be useful, right? It's not telling us about the surface area of the water. It's not telling us about anything. It's telling us about volume. It's telling about uh, something about kind of radius in a roundabout way. It's telling us about the height. Uh, and if I know the height and I know that it's got these proportions, then uh, I could figure out the radius as well, which we will do. So we'll take the derivative with respect to t, dv dt. Taking it slow here. Okay, so recognize this is one third pi. I'm just going to do it this way. Times the derivative of this stuff. Okay, well, this is two functions. I'm going to use the product rule. The derivative of r squared with respect to t 
be 2r dr dt okay, times h, so that's uh, u v, or u prime v, plus uh, u, that's r squared, v prime, that's dh dt. Great, like this is usually the point where we plug stuff in and solve for the unknown, right? Let's see what we know. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Eight cubic feet per second, okay? Or minute, excuse me, again. Eight, eight cubic feet per minute. Okay, so this is eight. That's, that's nice, okay? So uh, that, uh, I guess I'll write it over here. DV dt, DV dt is eight. To find the rate at which the depth. Okay, that's the thing we want to know. That's the thing we want to find out. Um, when the height of the water is six feet deep. Okay, so that's h is six. All right, what's left to know? Um, I know this. Uh, that's a number. That's a number. Two r. Okay, I don't know what r is. All right, so I'll put a little question mark there. A little question mark. What is r? H, I know H, H is 6, great, R, again, what is R, okay, oh, this is uh, the R, D, T, so also I don't know what that is, D, H, D, T, of course, that's the thing I'm trying to figure out, so that's, of course, something I don't know, well, normally we just plug stuff in and say, hey, uh, there it is, isolate the variable, good to go, but uh, we don't have that going on, hmm, so what's R, well, if I look at that information they gave me about the, the span across and the, the height, uh, like if the tank were full, of uh, the full capacity of the tank, I can set up a relationship between uh, R and H, right? So, well, R would be 4, right? 4 on this side, 4 on this side. So R is 4 when H is 19, okay? So 4 to 19 is the ratio of the radius to the height. Okay, so I can certainly solve for r, right? Cross multiply, all that stuff. Uh, 4h equals 19r. Uh, h is 6, so I can come over here. 24 equals 19r, and divide by 19. So r is 24 over 19. So that's nice, right? Now this is not a question mark anymore, neither is this. But drdt is a question mark. What is drdt? Um, well, we could use this guy here. If we took the derivative of it, what would we have? We'd have dh dt and dr dt, and we'd have some way to write dr dt in, in, um, in terms of dh dt. So take the derivative of both sides with respect to h4 dh dt equals 19 dr dt. I'd like to replace dr dt, so I'll solve for dr dt, and we get 4 nineteenths times dh dt equals dr dt. Okay, so that was an option. Like We can do that now, we can plug that in for dr dt. Uh, if you're thinking a little differently on a different day, when the humidity is a little different and it's a little warmer, you might go back to the original function and say, well, I don't even know anything about r, so why would I take the derivative with a function, or of a function with an r in it? I could, just from the very beginning, replace r with, um, Let's see, 4 19ths h. I can just go 4 19ths h squared and go it that way. Either way, we'll come out the same thing. This is the way that I did it, so that's the way I'm showing you. You can do it any way you want. So dv dt, that's 8, 1 third pi times 2 times r, which we found to be 24 over 19. Uh, times dr dt, which we found to be 4 over 19 times dh dt times h, which is 6. Okay, these are all, of course, multiplied together. Um, plus r squared, that's going to be 24 over 19. That's what we found r to be squared. dh dt, that's the thing I want to know. We're going to solve for it. Okay, so. Um, now let's, I guess, clean this up a little bit. We'll call this pi over 3 times, uh, let's see, we get 24 times 24 times 2, 
over 19 times 19. Notice we get a 24 times 24 over 19 times 19 here as well. It's kind of a neat thing. So anyway, we got 24 squared is 576 times 2. OK, so that's 1152. 1152 uh, over 19 times 19. Three sixty-one. All right, so that's our two times twenty-four times four times six over nineteen times nineteen times d h d t. All right, uh, plus uh, we know the denominator is going to be three sixty-one because it's also a nineteen times nineteen. And what was twenty-four squared again? It was five seventy-six. D h d t. All right. this and I'll lock it and now I will take all of this over there okay now I have some more room to work um, distribute this pi over 3 or multiply by 3 over pi I'm gonna multiply by 3 over pi I'll get on the other side 24 over pi equals I have a dhdt in both of these things so I'm gonna make a dhdt times What's that going to be? That's going to be 1152 over 361 plus 576 over 361. They have common denominator. I just have to add them up. So I'm going to go with 1152 um, plus 576. Enter 1728 over 361. How do we get the HTT by itself? Multiply by the reciprocal. So we get um, 24 times 361. Da, 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 da. 8,664 uh, over 1728 pi. Okay, let's see. You know, I wonder, maybe 1728 is divisible by 24. Um, I think there's a pretty good chance of that because all these 24s in there. But maybe we could have simplified that to begin with was 1728 divisible by 21 and multiplied by 361 over 1728. Could we have canceled the 24 and the 1728? Let's see, 1728 divided by 24, 72. All right, so we could even clean this up. We could say 361 over 72 times pi. That is dh dt. Was this a, tr a tricky one, a difficult one? Of course it was. I mean, we're supposed to display our mastery of related rates problems here. And certainly, you know, you've seen that I'm a master, right, after doing that. Because um, those are the kind of questions they're going to ask you on the AP test. So why would I water it down for you and then just set you up to uh, be confused later? Um, but we'll do mo more of these as we review for the test later in the year. Um, I will uh, be correcting that um, mistake in the, in the uh, formula. And we'll, we'll do a, something similar uh, like that later on in a bit. So uh, now I'm rambling because I'm kind of tired. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video, and thank you for watching.